If you're in the boxing ring, would it not be an advantage if your opponent's gloves were to light up just before they try and hit you? And wouldn't it be nice if your sim racing car of choice gave you a warning before a corner's about to go wrong? Well, that second wish already is a real thing. In many GT3, Cup and prototype cars, if you get to know and pay attention to the driver information lights on the dashboard, you can drive with the gift of premonition because these lights that you can see will tell you something's not right before you ever feel or hear it. Give me the next few minutes of your time and I'll give you something that will help you set your best race pace and control your car. This video is shot in iRacing but the lessons within apply to pretty much all proper simulators. Thanks to VRS for supporting this guide, their pedals are sublime and their wheelbases offer my favourite flavour of force feedback, so raw and so direct, I sense it all. There's a reason they're my favourite sim racing hardware brand. Get 5% off VRS using the link in the description in their stores worldwide. If you spend long enough in a GT3, Prototype or Porsche Cup and so on, you may see some lights flash up on a dashboard every now and then. Within time, you'll conclude that they tend to appear mainly under moments of hard braking or hard accelerating. I call these driver information lights because they only exist to give you, the driver, important information via the medium of light. Simple. They're there to tell you if any of your wheels are locking up, ABS is kicking in or slipping under traction depending on what each car has equipped. They're most often found either integrated into the dashboard display, such as on this Porsche Cup car, mounted separately around the cockpit as per this Porsche 963, mounted on the steering wheel as per this Dallara LMP2, point is they'll always be in your field of vision somewhere in the cockpit. Here's why it matters so much to pay attention to them. Here I am in the Porsche Cup car, heading towards the next corner. I suffer a horrendous front lockup fail to make the corner and sail off into the dirt. But rewind and watch again. What's the very first clue that something's going to go wrong? It's this, a dashboard light. It's purple, which in many cars, including the Porsche Cup, means that the front wheels are locking up. As a bonus, because it's the right hand set of lights that's lit up, that means that it's the front right suffering the issue. Not that it really matters much in the grand scheme of things, but interesting to know. When you have a front lockup, you need to solve it immediately by backing off the brakes, and the sooner you do this, the better the chance of still being able to make the corner, which is why the lights are so useful. They are the very first sign of trouble that you'll get. The purple light shows up here, but you won't notice the tires screeching until around here, and you won't feel the vague loss of grip in your steering wheel till around here. Far and away, that purple light is the earliest warning sign. Same concept, different car and corner. This time we're in the Mustang GT3, and don't tell the driver, but I've set the brake balance heavily towards the rear for the purpose of this demonstration to make a point. I head down the hill and start braking, and the car loses the rear on turning. Rewind and watch back and you'll see that these yellow lights appear on the dashboard long before turning into the corner. In many cars, including the Ford Mustang GT3, yellow lights mean the rear wheels are slipping. In this scenario, if I see any yellow lights, I need to be aware that the rear could be looser than expected when entering the corner properly and I need to keep control. Maybe slow down a touch and back out of the corner just a bit, just to keep it well within the limits. So what do you do with this information over time? Fine, they help you react quicker, but what if you see purple lights or yellow lights a lot? Is there something you're supposed to do with that info? Well, the first thing you should do is a sanity check, because you could be causing it by simply braking too hard. Braking too hard for the situation will cause these wheel lockups, regardless of any other factor. So, if you're a relative newcomer to sim racing, then that's the first thing to mention. These lights may simply be telling you that you're overdoing it. Adjust your habits to try and minimise the activation, calm your braking down a bit and I'll bet you'll find tons of lap time and consistency by just working on that. However, if you're more experienced and you're confident in your braking force, but you just don't know much about these driver information lights, then this is what you need to know. 
Seeing purple lights frequently under braking tends to indicate that your brake balance is set too far forward. It's overly biased towards the front. If this is also accompanied by a feeling that the car just isn't willing to turn under braking, as in understeering, then this may indeed be the problem. In cars like the Porsche Cup, which don't have anti-lock braking systems, this will make front lockups more common and will make the car feel stiffer on corner entry even if there is no lockup at all. In GT3 cars, like our Mustang, which does have ABS, lockups won't occur but the car will still resist corner entry, it just won't be as dramatic and obvious. It's a balance issue and the drive information lights offer a clue as to which direction you need to go. Move the brake balance 1% in the direction of the rear and see if it makes a difference and then keep moving it in steps until you start getting the opposite problem. Speaking of which, seeing yellow lights frequently under braking tends to indicate that your brake balance is set too far back. It's overly biased towards the rear. If this is also accompanied by a feeling that the car is too loose or nervous under braking, as in oversteering, then this may indeed be the problem. In cars like the Porsche Cup, this will make the rear of the car want to step out under braking and turning, and will make the car feel looser on corner entry and harder to control. In GT3 cars, such as our Mustang, which does have ABS, Lockups again won't occur, but the car will still suffer instability on corner entry and make it hard to stay in control. Once again, it's a balance issue that the driver information lights can help inform you of. Move the brake balance 1% into the direction of the front and see if it helps bring the car more stability under braking and keep moving it in steps to see if it continues to help the car's balance. As a side note, in cars with ABS, such as the GT3s, the lights actually indicate activation of the ABS system, not lockups directly. There is a difference, but in a nutshell, if your ABS is set to very safe and restrictive levels, then it's normal to see these lights a lot. That's the ABS system letting you know that it's there, wrapping you up in cotton wool and keeping you safe. It's not indicative of a problem you need to solve as such. It's when you're running ABS at looser, more experienced, reasonable levels that the lights really matter more. Also, just to state the obvious, if you think the car's driving absolutely perfectly and you're absolutely in the zone and hitting your marks, don't worry if the driver information lights are popping off. They're there to help you quickly assess why the car doesn't feel right, but only if it doesn't feel right. They're not there to nanny you into making adjustments where they're not needed. Sometimes, though, the car will slowly migrate away from that sweet spot over a race stint due to fuel burn, tyre wear and other factors. This is yet another way driver information lights can help you slowly track the car's balance and react to it before it becomes a bigger problem suddenly. You can do this just by feel as you go, but having the visual confirmation that the car's getting a bit loose or tight on corner entry means it only takes you one corner to understand what to do, not five. Here's where the whole video falls apart though, because not all cars use the same colour coding system. The Mercedes GT3 doesn't follow the colour coding system or really give that much away. Unfortunately, it's down to you to get familiar with each car's information lights. Sometimes it will just come down to car knowledge. The overall moral of the lesson is this. These lights are useful, start actively paying attention to them, now you know what they do and what they're telling you. If you've ever encountered somebody that qualified on similar pace to you but beat you through consistency over a full race distance, there's a solid chance that they're aware of these lights, know what they mean and know how to adjust their brake bias and themselves to keep the car in the sweet spot of perfect balance. Even if nothing's wrong and you don't adjust anything, Merely knowing about them increases confidence in yourself that you know your car. And thanks for watching, I hope this is really informative and enlightening and I really hope it helps you out there. Don't forget also to check out the VRS 5% discount link in the description. I love their hardware, I think it would help you too. And cheers again.